Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and welcome back again to a ship story video. Today we're going to talk about the Dutch vessel, the SS Jan Pieterzoon Koen. Um, for those uh, new subscribers, I quickly want to thank you that you have subscribed to my new channel, to my channel, I mean, uh, it really means a lot. And also then for the new ones who are here to this channel, uh, for those who don't know, I'm an Italian who lives in the Netherlands, so uh, this being a Dutch ship, it kind of hits home. And uh, I will try my best to tell her story correctly. Uh, but just one quick thing, I'm not an expert, so I might get some things wrong, but uh, I hope you still enjoy the video, so yeah, let's begin. So let's first start with uh, her construction. This fine uh, Dutch liner, the SS Jan Pieterson Koen, was ordered on 27 December 1912 and laid down on 14 October 1913 at the, Neder the Nederlandse Scheepsbouwmaatschappij Shipyard in Amsterdam. So, uh, in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, of course. Um, Jan Pieterson Koen had seven decks, three continues the full length of the ship with a shelter deck. Eight watertight bulkheads divided the ship into nine watertight compartments with ten watertight doors capable of being closed remotely from the bridge. Eight single-ended forced draft Scotch boilers with two furnaces each provided steam for two, for two triple expansion engines with an indicated horsepower of 6000 AEP. Regi registry showing nominal manufactured nominal horsepower of oh 1364 driving twin screw propellers boilers and engines were manufactured by the Nederlandse fabriek van werktuigen that actually means uh, and and that I, I i don't know how to say it in english but i will try i will try to translate it and Spoorweg Material Amsterdam, so again a company in Amsterdam. The ship was electrically, electrically lighted throughout with some electrical auxiliaries, including one steering engine, another being steam driven, as were the cargo working winches. As built, the ship had accommodation for 202 first class passengers in 107 cabins and four suites. 128 second class passengers in 49 cabins, 46 third class passengers in 60 cabins, and 42 fourth class passengers. So actually this, this ship had actually an extra class, so fourth class. Which in my which I which is quite interesting, in my opinion at least. First class passengers had access to a deck saloon and a veranda cafe. Smoking room, nursery, gymnasium, photographic dark room, and a 138-seat dining saloon. The crew was 161. Navigation and safety and safety equipment included wireless and submarine signals, bells, and 14 boats, two powered, sufficient for all passengers on board. Christened by Miss Carolina Anna Classina, ten den Tex, the ship was launched on 30 September 1914. After being completed in June 1915, Jan Pieterson Koen became the new flagship of the Stoomvaart Maatschappij Nederland, uh, a Dutch shipping company of course, and was also the largest ship ever to be built in the Netherlands at the time. She completed her sea trials in Eimuiden in June 1915, with several passengers on board, including the company's president, J.B.A. Jonkheer, four ministers with their spouses, and the mayor of Amsterdam with his spouse and two law enforcers. There were also a high number of officials, important, bus important import business relation officials, and the supervisory boards and the boards of shipyard and the shipping company of the SMN. The ship's master at the time was Captain H.G.J. Ewkens, 
We led the ship to open seas together with the tugboat Cyclop van Zurmulen. Zurmulen. The ship sailed south past Zandvoort, Katwijk, Noordwijk and Scheveningen. During lunch, however, a submarine was spotted by the guests and crew. Everyone became worried at first, but it was soon clear that it was a Dutch submarine that was given orders to guide the young Pietersen Koen back to Amuiden. The ship, the ship completed her sea trials and arrived back in Amuiden without any incident. Now let's move on to part 2 and that's her early life. On 11 September 1915 at 3pm, Jan Pietersen Koen left Amsterdam, Netherlands for her maiden voyage to Batavia. She sailed through the Mediterranean Sea and the Suez Canal to reach her destination. Jan, Jan, uh, the SS Jan Pietersen Koen left Amsterdam for Batavia again on 1 January 1916. But this time she would sail around Cape of Good Hope and Cape Town to reach Batavia. She would arrive on 17 February 1916 before returning to the Netherlands, where she arrived on 6 May. After the war, the ship would continue to sail to Amsterdam, Batavia route. Now this is um, what, something I wanted to make clear also was that this uh, was not the only ship company who would let their ship sail that route. Uh, who, who let their ship sail that route. Um, the Rotterdam Lloyd also uh, had two ships or many of their ships uh, who sailed that uh, warm climate route. For the example, the uh, MS Sibayak and the MS Beluran. Now, and also one thing um, that we need to know is that um, the ships uh, would have... Wait, let me try to say it clearer. Um, the paint on those ships, the ships that would go to the warmer climate. I wouldn't say they would have had a special, plane, uh, special paint compared to the Atlantic liners, but um, as we all know, um, the Indies are a warm climate. So for example, if we take a ship for the North Atlantic route and she would like sail to uh, the Indies, her paint would come off, but um, the paint that um, these ships had, like the Jan Peterson Kuhn and the uh, Sibayak and Beluran, that paint would um, stick more to the hull instead of falling off because of the heat. So um, that's something I wanted to uh, make clear. I hope uh, you understood it because it, uh, my English is not the best, but uh, like I said again, I wanted to make that clear. Now we move on to the final part of this story, and that is World War II and tragically her sinking. The Jan Pietersen Kuhn left Batavia for the last time on 28 June 1939 and was stationed in Amsterdam on 29 July 1939, where she was waiting to be scrapped. However, due to the outbreak of the Second World War, the ship was needed, the ship was needed again and she made two short voyages to Lisbon, Portugal, in order to retrieve passengers from the MS Oranje. When the German Navy or when the German Army invaded the Netherlands in May 1940, the Royal Netherlands Navy made a plan which involved scuttling Jan Pietersen Koen at the entrance of the port of Eimuiden in order to prevent German warships entering the harbor. The plan was set into motion in the night of 14 May 1940. Captain R. van Rees Flessinga sailed Jan Pietersen Koen from Amsterdam to Amuiden. Once there, the ship was supposed to be escorted to the harbor entrance by two tugboats, but they were accidentally sunk too early. As a solution to the problem, the Royal Netherlands Navy ordered the tugboat Atje and a minesweeper to tow the ship into the, to, tow, to tow the ship into place. The tugboat and minesweeper towed the ship into place with much difficulty due to the tide. To the tide change, the ship was positioned with the bow to the southern pier and the stern to the northern pier of the port entrance. <laughs> Excuse me. The explosive the explosives which were previously installed on the ships 
were detonated and the ship sank between the piers. Her upper decks were still, st were still sticking out of the water due to the shallow depths. The plan was successful and the ship prohibited the German ships to enter the harbor. The Netherlands, however, surrendered to the Axis powers and was occupied by Nazi Germany. The German army had emptied the ship of movable pro property during 1940. They could do this because the ship was mostly above water. Rijkswaterstaat was thinking of salvaging Jan Pieterson's schoon, since the ship was mostly intact and in shallow waters. But due to the series of storms, the ship sank deeper into the sand. In the ship sank deeper into the sand. In 1941, on 50 meter portion of the storm was removed, so big ships could sail into the harbor again. During the remainder of the war, Jan Peterson's schoon sank deeper into the sea, and her upper decks were severely damaged and deteriorated by the strong waves that were constantly pounded the ship. The funnels, and some decks also, the funnels and some decks had also collapsed during this period. After the war in May and June 1945, the Royal Netherlands Navy, with help from the Royal Navy, destroyed what was left, what was left of the ship with depth, with depth charges. However, a lot of debris was left in the entrance and the Dutch government was forced to clean up the debris from the bottom of the sea in 19. 68, so bigger ships could sail into the harbor without any problems. Now one qu uh, quick thing I wanted to say was when I was writing this um, script I was thinking uh, by myself um, what would have happened if uh, the Jan Peterson Kuhn was raised by the Germans and I uh, started thinking more about that and um, I talked a little bit early in the video about the Rotterdam Lloyd uh, ship the MS Balluron she was also taken over by the Nazis in uh, World War II and uh, the Dutch actually refused to sail for the Germans but it, that's that's a different story for a different video but um, what actually happened to the Balloon was that um, she was converted first in a troop ship for the Germans and then later into a hospital. And then, no, wait, I'm, I'm saying it uh, wrong. The Balloon was first converted into an, a hospital ship for the Germans, later into a troop ship for the Germans. And uh, like I said, the Dutch refused to sail for the, Ger f refused to sail for the Germans. But... Um, at the end, also, she sunk by the Germans mainly, but that, like I said, it's a story for another video. But maybe if the Jan Peterson Kuhn was surfaced by the Germans, perhaps the same thing could have happened to her. Maybe she could have been used as a warship or, tro or troop ship or hospital ships and used as a weapon against the Allies. And in that scenario, we can also uh, understand the decision that the Dutch made of sinking her not only that they sunk her for the uh, so that the warships couldn't enter the port they also sunk sunk her of course because they didn't want the same uh, thing that happened to the Baloran that she would have been used by the Germans so lucky for us that didn't ha that didn't that didn't happen but uh, that doesn't take away that she was a beautiful ship and of course it's sad to see a ship sunk so that's uh, what i wanted to say now like i said uh, this is the end of a video uh, i hope you liked this video um, and uh, first again i want to thank you uh, thank all the new subscribers who have subscribed to my channel um, that really means a lot we are so close to reaching um, the 200 sub but um, like I earlier said I hope you enjoyed the video I enjoyed making it and I hope I got all the things correctly so uh, like I said also at the beginning of the video I am not an expert so if I did if I did get some things wrong I am sorry forgive me but um, for the fourth time now that I said it I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you have friends who like ocean ships or 
uh, ocean liners or ships just in general show them my channel we are trying to reach 200 subs and we are very close to that goal so uh, guys have a good night or day wherever you are and we will see each other on the next video bye bye